Hey there, I'm SourceMake, and today I'm going to show you my C++ data structure cheat sheet. So as usual, I've got my website open, and it's got so much code that it's it's ridiculous. I have did so much work just to make sure that I have this cheat sheet ready in case I need it for an algorithms contest or something. And I've also got the code on GitHub, so there will be links to this webpage below the video. If you'd like to go straight to the code and you don't want to hear me speak, then go ahead and click the link below this video. But while you're down there, also click the subscribe button for this YouTube channel because this actually took a lot of work. So um, so, so C++ data structures. Data structures are containers that hold primitive data types. So you've got ints, you've got bools, you've got cars, you've got doubles, and it doesn't matter what programming language you use, those primitive data types pretty much always exist. Sometimes they're taken care of for you, sometimes you have to declare them yourself if the language is like statically typed, but those are the data types that you use in programming. And those are primitive. What you really need sometimes are containers that hold them. So for example, you've got arrays, you've got vectors, stacks, queues, priority queues, you've got sets, you've got unordered sets and unordered maps. And those are containers, but not only are they like containers that hold primitive data types, there are underlying structures that compose how those containers work. Like for example, unordered maps are implemented with hash tables, which means you're using an unordered map, but the underlying data structure that the code uses is a hash table. And there are other types like red black trees or special kinds of trees that you need. You don't really need to know, but it would be good to know. So you, you, you need to know at least this level of using these data structures. And then eventually when you get to the, a good stage, you can learn really deep how, how these things are implemented. So with that said, you use data structures really to improve algorithms. And I use them a lot in algorithm competitions. That's why I made this particular cheat sheet. But it also helps the way you think about problems because it would be like if you were a carpenter and you didn't know bricks existed. Then how could you build a house? You're very limited in your thinking. If you know these data structures, then you can think in a different way of how to solve problems. And it really helps like your critical thinking because you know how to solve something in a different way because you know a different structure that can be used to solve the problem. So in this video, I'm not going to be walking through this code. If you want to see the code yourself, go ahead and go to this page or go to GitHub and, and you can run the code yourself. Again, I, I have the code like set up really nicely and all you have to do, there's even a make file. So all you have to do is type make array, make vector, make priority queue, stuff like that. And, and you can see how the code works itself. There are so many comments. It's really basic, should be simple. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to explain how these data structures work. So regardless of if you're using a different programming language like Java or C sharp, if you know, if you watch this video, you'll know how data structures work. So this is a good basic video for you to understand. So to start out with, just know that there are basic primitive data types that are like ints, booleans, characters. But most of the time, you have to group these up. You can't just write one integer. Maybe you have a bunch of integers. So that's where arrays come in. We're, we're going to go down the list, and I'm going to explain it. I'm not going to go through the code at all. So arrays are basically containers that hold the data structure sequentially. So you declare an array in C++. And I'm not going to go in depth with it because it kind of sucks as a data structure. You declare an array of fixed size, and you can think of it as like a little grid that has a primitive data type inside each one, and it's indexed. So index 0 is the first one, index 1 is the next one, index 2 is the next one, and inside each of these is a, a data type like an integer or a boolean or character, something else like that. But that's not really useful because you have to declare a fixed size. In good programming language, there are good tools that let you declare these things called vectors or lists. And these are the exact same thing, but instead of being a fixed size, you can add to the end of it. So these and linked lists are like the two basic data types for really underlying composing anything else. And vectors or lists, which is the next data type we're talking about, are again, just like you've got the data structure in an indexed based list. 
and you you basically access each type in, in by its index or you can add to the end of the list to keep going it's just a list and you can have lists of lists which sound confusing but kind of makes sense what you need to do for that is you need to practice and one way to think of it is like a spreadsheet so in a spreadsheet you have one row but no 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 you have one row with a bunch of columns which is like one list one vector one array but then you can have those lists mo many of those rows so that's like a vector of vectors and that's like you you need to know how to use that but that just takes practice depending on the problems so that was basic. I don't want to go too in-depth with that. You should kind of understand that. Next are stacks. Stacks are like stacks of plates. So imagine you have a bunch of plates. You put one down and that's on the bottom. Then you put one and it goes on top. Then you take another one and you put it on top. And when you're reaching for the plates for dinner, the one you take first is the one that's on top. So a stack is a uh, first in is the last out data structure. The first one that goes in is the last one that comes out. That's a stack, and it's really useful for certain applications. Again, you have to think about this data structure and see where it makes sense to use it. So the next data structure is a queue, which is basically first in, first out. Think of it like a line on a grocery store. The first person that goes into the line on the grocery store is the first one that gets to the checkout register. The second person who goes in is the second one who gets to check out, and it goes in like that. Something that goes on the end has to wait the longest until it's their turn. That's a queue, as opposed to a stack. Queues and stacks are sort of linked, but d they're, they're good data types. Next, you've got priority queues, and this is where we get into the like really advanced data structures. So far, vectors are really basic, stacks are basic, queues are basic, but priority queues take a little effort. And what a priority queue is, is it's a queue where people go into the line, but people with better numbers go in first. So let's say you've got like five people in a line and they've got numbers one, two, three, four, and five. It doesn't matter what order they went into the line. Maybe four is the first person in the line, but they have a high number, so that's not good for them. Maybe one is at the end of the line, but their number is good, so they've got higher priority, which put, which means when we pick someone to go up to the registers, one goes out first, even though four is ahead of it in the line. And that's a little hand wavy, but basically, de depending on the underlying data structure, which could change, um, one could end up going in front of four, or one could just be in the back, and we would look for one first. And that depends if the implementation is like a, what kind of tree is being used. But remember, a priority queue is still a queue, but the person with the best number gets to go ahead. That's the way it works, by number, not by position. So that's useful in a lot of applications. And you can see the code here, but I don't want to go into the code. Just go ahead and look at it yourself. And this is where we start looking at a priority queue of nodes, like like particular nodes. Like we've been talking about basic data types being the primitive data type that goes in the container, like an inter a stack of integers or a, um, a, a queue of characters, stuff like that, which might not even make sense, but it does make sense. But sometimes you have like multiple data types. Like let's say you have a, a data type that's a food and it's got certain qualities about it, like an integer of the quantity of the food or maybe a name and it's got taste good, that's a Boolean, true or false, does it taste good? And a lot of times in problems, you do have to link these things together into an object, and you want to have a data structure that holds these objects. Well, there are ways to implement it in these data types, and the code, like starting here, really explains how to do that. So make sure you pay attention to that, because there are certain comparison operators that you're going to have to overload, which sounds really scary in C++, but basically... How does the priority queue by default know what's better? Well, it knows that one is less than two, and it knows that two is less than three. So if you have a character or, um, priority queue, it's basic. Or maybe your priority queue is for characters, and it knows that A is less than B, and B is less than C. And that's basic. You can do that really easily without doing any extra work. But once you start having objects, you need to define, okay, our queue is based on this in quantity, but we have these other pieces of the object that we need to carry with it. So 
you need to define an operator that says the quantity is what we're comparing. So that's comparison operators. You're going to need to know about that. Again, if you look at the code, you'll be so set because it explains everything. But specifically for C++, this is this code. Eventually, I'll be doing these data structures in Java. So again, it would be a good idea to visit this website a lot or click the link to this YouTube channel where I'll be explaining these things. So that's priority queue. You know about that. Next, we've got sets. Sets are a data structure where Imagine having a bag of items, and there are no duplicates in this bag. So let's say you put two into the bag, and then you put one into the bag, so your set is one and two. Then you put four into the bag, so your set is one, two, four. And let's say, and say you put another two into the bag. The second two doesn't get added. It, it just gets deleted because we already have a two in the bag. So the reason you would use a set is because you don't want any duplicates in your bag. You just want the straight up non-duplicates. And it, it's really useful a lot of the time just to not include duplicates and have this data structure handle checking if there is a duplicate or not. And that's sets. So in C++, sets are implemented as a red-black binary tree. And there's this other thing called unordered sets where the tree, since we don't care about order, we don't look at we um, implement it as a hash table instead of a tree. So again, again, the, the overall data structure is the same. A set is a data structure that, that, that holds items but doesn't contain duplicates. But the underlying data structures, red, black trees compared to hash tables, is what defines the functionality of that. So you're going to have to check your language documentation and make sure you know what's going on. And it, if you want my opinion, just use set. Don't use unordered set. You don't need to use unordered set. I've seen people use unordered set, but I don't think it's that much faster. I prefer set, to be honest with you. And again, set is just a data structure that doesn't contain duplicates, but it's really easy to look stuff up. And it's a really good implementation. And the last data structure we're going to talk about is unordered maps, which is basically a hash table. Now, I could spend forever talking about this, but basically, you map a key value pair. So let's say you want to map apple to a quantity, which is 1, or banana to a quantity that's 2. In this particular map, we have a string and an integer pair. And in Python, this is called a dictionary. Um, I don't know what it's called in other programming language, but key value pair, again. You've got this key that you want to map to a value. And I don't know how else to explain it without doing a whole lesson on it key value pairs, remember, which is unordered maps. The reason you would use that a lot of the time is because you want constant lookups. So if you've got this one thing, like this one string that defines one number, it would be really quick if, if you use a map as opposed to doing like an index-based search with vectors or, or stacks or something like that. So those are all the data structures that you're going to be needing to do anything. Those are the overall data structures. If you can master these data structures, you can answer any problem. I have went through what each of these are. If it doesn't make sense, review the video before what I said. And if, if it still doesn't make sense, what you need to do is you need to practice problems that where, where you implement these data structures. So go ahead and read through the C++ code. Eventually, I'll have some Java code on data structures in a video, which I'll link below this video. If it's done, then it's there. If it's not done, then subscribe and wait for it. But those are data structures. They're really important for any programming language. So hopefully, you kind of understand what they are. If you do, w w I gave a brief demo. I didn't go in depth with it. The professors would probably spend like, whole hour-long lectures explaining each of these, but I just gave you the feel for it. Those are data structures. This is my cheat sheet, so if you're in an algorithm competition and you quickly want to know, oh, how do you implement stack? Then just come to this page, search for stack. You, you can see this. You say, oh, you declare it like this. You push an item on like this. This is what you use to um, go through the stack, and you pop the top. You get the top like this. And, that's really easy. And stack seems really easy to do that, but when you get to like well, like priority queues where you have to make the custom comparing operator 
and you're using your own data structure, it becomes really complicated and you, you just don't remember it if you don't use the language in time. So like a lot of the time. So this is a really good reference. I would bookmark this page for sure. I know I'm going to be using this all the time. So that's my custom C++ data structure cheat sheet that I use for algorithms. Thanks for watching. I'm SourceMake and go ahead and subscribe.